this week on Steel Horse Thunder. Good day, Governor. That's right. It's that time of the season. We head downtown for the Governor's Ride. Uh, it's very rare that you get a chance to ride for two and a half, three hours without putting your feet down. <laughs> we head down to Franklin for Bria's Ride, and we catch up with Hammer to find out about the Rams Ride. All that and much more this week on Steel Horse Thunder. That's thinking right there, folks. That's thinking. That's what all of us need to keep doing. Steel Horse is brought to you by Leidendorf Law with over 60 years experience in motorcycle and automotive injury cases. Family, we know it's important. That's why our family mission is to protect yours. If you've been injured in any accident, call us. The insurance company may not be looking out for your family, but we are. Call us. We will get you the compensation you deserve and help you protect the most important thing in your life, your family. Ladendorf Law, your Indiana injury lawyers. Like family, because we are. When it's time to ride, we'll keep your mind where it matters most, on the open road. We get it. Rider Insurance is the only insurance company specifically created for the motorcycle and ATV communities. No one but riders. Our specialized staff is here for you with great coverage options, discounts to help you save, and 24-7 claims reporting if something happens along the way. And with roadside assistance included on all of our policies, we've got your back wherever the road leads. We get it. No worries. Just riding. Hey, it's a beautiful Friday morning. Apparently nobody's going to work. Does it get any better than this? Cindy, what's going on today? We're downtown for the governor's ride, and you know it's a tradition. It is a tradition, and this is, I think, the 11th year now uh, that, that uh, you know, Mike Pence has taken over for Mitch Daniels, and it's been going on for 11 years, or this will be the 11th year. Have you ever done this ride? I haven't. Well, shame on you. Steve Reeves put me in that position one time, and I had never done the ride. I wanted to do it to you as well. Well, today I'm doing the ride, and it's going to be fun. Yes, it is. Let's go see if we can find Governor Pence and a few other people around here. Well, Governor, today's the day of the big ride, and uh, what, what are you expecting today? Well, Scott, it's a, it's a beautiful day. We have hundreds of uh, bikers out, and uh, uh, I'm uh, praying for a safe ride and confident, uh, once again, we're going we're gonna to raise an awful lot of money for the National Guard uh, Relief Fund here in Indiana. This, uh, as I said today, there's something about being on a motorcycle that feels like freedom. Yes. And what, what better way for us to celebrate and, and, uh, uh, and enjoy this sport in Indiana than by raising money for people that make that freedom possible. Well, I know you're wearing the vest here. You got the vest, Rolling Thunder. I know you went out there and you, you saw Rolling Thunder off when they did the ride to the wall. Yeah. Um, I know you're always at the Blue Star, talking to the families at the Blue Star ride. You're, you're, you're at all the different rides that we do. I'm amazed at how much you get around to do. And, do you kind of enjoy today, though? You, you, yeah, you got to talk to a little bit, but now you get to get on the bike and you get to ride for a while. Yeah, absolutely love it. I mean, there is, uh, there, there really. Is, I was on a bike, kind of a check ride on Friday, just getting loose. You know, I don't ride as much as you do, and uh, uh, staying on the back roads. I, I just don't think there's a better way to enjoy the scenery of Indiana than on a motorcycle. And uh, uh, so today, you know, we'll be taking the back roads all the way up to Fort Wayne, and it, I'm, I've been looking forward to it for a long time. You know the old saying, you, you never see a motorcycle parked outside a psychiatrist's office. I think there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> what, do you say we go, what do you say we go have a safe ride? Yeah, great. Yeah, safe ride. And, and again, thanks again to all, all the riders that have come out to help raise money for uh, the best National Guard in America. Hey, we're here for the governor's ride. And I had the unlucky incident of having to park next to your bike. Dude, what kind of bike are you riding? It is a 2004 Honda Rune. And I know it didn't come stock this way. No, it did not. It was a, a reddish color. The stock color was red. And uh, I had it custom painted when I came back from my ride. So you're a veteran and you came back, you wanted to get on a motorcycle. Why do all the veterans ride motorcycles? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there's a mixed bag that's in the military and it just happened to be a lot of motorcyclists in, in the military as well. Tell me a little bit about this bike, man. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Like I said, I was embarrassed to have to park mine next to you. It's a 1832cc motorcycle, and uh, it's a, as I said before, it's a 2004. Um, I bought it in 2007. It had 375 miles on it, and uh, I, it was love at first sight. I traded a Hayabusa and my 1997 Valkyrie for it, and then I got a good deal uh, at Dryers, 
and uh, I've loved the bike ever since. Uh, my best friend nicknamed it Halle Berry, so ever since then it's been called Halle Berry. So. Uh, and then uh, I decided to upgrade, do some upgrades to it, uh, which it comes as a solo bike. And so I decided to uh, add the Ryko had a, a, a kit to make it a two-up bike, and Corbin had the two-up seat that goes for it. And so I did it, did that, and then uh, I did that, had that kit for about two years, and then I decided to add the Corbin bags to it uh, and, uh, uh, and did the paint job, as I said before, when I got back from Iraq. So. Look over my shoulder. That guy's got a face on the back of his head. You know, every year, you always find that one that's in exile. And we look for him everywhere we go, and today we're here at the Governor's Ride, and we found our buddy that's in exile. How's it going this year? Oh, we're doing great, thank you. And uh, the exile, can you explain that again for, for those that, that aren't familiar with that? Well, that refers to the American Legion post that was founded in Shanghai, China. Uh, it was formed in 1907, uh, chartered in 1909, and operated uh, with distinction until the communist Chinese took over and booted us out in November of 1948. So we retained our charter and we continue to operate in exile. And right now our temporary post headquarters is in Houston, Texas, with the hopes that one of these days we'll return to our building in Shanghai. So what brings you out to this ride today? Uh, I have nothing to do at home. But you're excited about going on this ride? Yeah. Have you ever been on a motorcycle ride before? No. Not one. There's a lot of bikes here today. What do you think about it? Uh, I think there's way more than I've ever seen. All right, dude. What you got around your neck? Is this is this garlic? Is this uh, keeping the vampires away? What do we got going on here? Yep. It's keeping all the evil away from me. <laughs> That's actually really cool, man. Where'd you get that? Um, a friend of mine makes them. Really? Yeah. It's all hand beaded. I want one. I give you a card. Bucks, you can buy one. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what they cost. Dude, that's that is actually really cool. It was really standing out. So, what brings you out to the governor's ride? My friend invited me, so I thought I'd ride with him. Don't care about the governor. You just wanted to ride with your buddy. That's right. <laughs> you know, a few years ago, it was Mitch Daniels' last governor's ride. Steve and I went on that ride, and. Uh, Halfway through that ride, well, Steve bailed immediately, but halfway through that ride, my linkage broke on my transmission, and uh, I had to get off the side of the road. I had to let the ride pass, and uh, I limped it back to the last town we'd gone through, found a hardware store, bought some zip ties so I could zip tie it back together to get me home. So that was, I believe, three years ago. That same, those same zip ties were still holding that. Bad things happen to good people. That's the difficult part of our job. Our firm works with great people during very tough times. Because of that, your compensation is our first priority. No one can prepare for the aftermath of an accident, but the insurance company is prepared to give you the bare minimum. That's why you need legal guidance, to give you a voice and get you the money you deserve. Ladendorf Law, your Indiana injury lawyers. Like family, because we are. So Karen, you're retired now, right? Yes, ma'am. And so you're coming out to do the governor's ride? Yes, ma'am. Well, I love your bike. It is so cool. 
Tell me about your bike because um, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. I mean, it's got eyelashes. I know. And when I when I saw it, I think I, I found it on Craigslist last year. And it's like, man, that could be a million bucks and I'm going to buy it. You know what I mean? And uh, the guy I got it from is the one responsible for the paint job or the design of it. Um, I had to repaint the tank, though, because she uh, was into Chunky Monkey. And so there's like a monkey on the tank and Chunky Monkey on the side. So I had to have that all repainted and then had to have that replaced because it said Chunky Monkey. But um, over this winter, I'm going to do some more things to it, kind of make it my own, break up the pink a little bit because it is kind of a, an overload. No, it's not an overload. <laughs> I think what drew it to me is now what's kind of repelling me a little bit. So I just want to kind of break it up. Like I'm going to change the collar to a dark charcoal, you know, kind of break up that pink. And then I'm going to have a, a 3D um, skull on the front, on the fairing. That's going to be cool. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll make it mine for sure. So she's going to have a mohawk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Every bike needs a mohawk. <laughs> so how long have you had this bike? Um, just since last July. Mm -hmm. It's my fourth bike. I've been riding a little over 10 years. So, put my first one down, broke my arm, got right back on the next season. That's good because a lot of people wouldn't get back on after that. So it's good that you did. Don't keep me down. I spent 31 years in the military. I'm stubborn. <laughs> yes, and you should be. <laughs>
So Kelly, this is Bria's ride. You guys have been doing it for eight years. How does it feel to be able to do a ride like this for your own daughter and to raise the amounts of money that you do? It is absolutely amazing. Um, we are so blessed with all these biker friends that Bria has. Um, all Dave and Debbie Sandlin um, every year pour their hearts out to Bria and we, we are just truly blessed with, with everybody. So, What is it that Bria has? She has a rare condition called um, CDKL5, and it is a seizure disorder. Um, it's affected about 950 kids in the world, um, and as of now, there is no cure. 950, that's not like 1,000, that's like just 950. It's roughly 950. Um, there's a new testing that they're doing now, so more kids are getting diagnosed daily. Um, we're on a Facebook site, and um, Kids, you know, kids get added almost every day. So it, it, we're just trying to spread awareness to, to find a cure for this and, and help these kids. So Dad, how does it feel to have all these motorcyclists out here? Because there is a lot of a lot of motorcycles today. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, the, the community and everybody coming out and enjoying themselves and, you know, supporting our daughter. Hey man, you guys are out here doing a little sound check. You, you guys doing some music today, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are. Uh, we're revving knuckleheads. Uh, we're a uh, local band from around here, and we just started up about a year ago, and it just seems to be taking off. So uh, everything's going well. Now, do you ride a motorcycle too? Oh yeah, I ride a 2011 Street Glide. I'm a uh, chaplain of the Eight Day Riders, and uh, we've been going now about a year and a couple months, and it seems to be going good. We do a lot of good things for a lot of good people. Right on. And so, so tell me a little bit about 8th Day Riders. I know we've, we've ran into you guys, you know, a time or two. A little bit about the 8th Day Riders. We just wanted to start something where we could help others in our community or whatnot, and even sometimes outside of our community. But uh, I don't know, Just we just come together and, and we try to, like I say, just try to help our people in our community. We try to clothe children that aren't clothed, and we try to help people that just, you know, need, you know, I don't know, we just do a lot of good things. Like, uh, for example, we uh, hate to even talk about it, but a, a boy named Jackson, he only lived 30 some days and uh, we did a ride to, to, so we could get a headstone for his grave and just, I mean, a lot of it's heart wrenching because I have to write stuff and say it over the grave. So it's it's a hard job, but I love to do it. I wouldn't, I'd rather do nothing else, but uh, we just try to help people, that's all. This is what we like to see. We're at the very back of the parking lot with the bikes and we ran out of room here. So now they have to go to the overflow. This is what you want to see at every charity ride. I took off work today. I work for Milestone Contractors. I took off work today to do this. And they didn't mind, did they? No. Once they find out that I do rides, they don't mind at all because they understand. Well, you know, motorcyclists do a lot for the for charities and for the community, and so it is amazing for people to be able to take off work, come on, do these rides, and, and pay out the money that you do. Steve, you're here at Bria's Ride, and you told me that you have a ride that's going on. Actually, I see your T-shirt. It's the Angel Ride. Um, can you tell me about why you're here today and what your ride is about? It's about the same thing we're here today for. Uh, my granddaughter has the same genetic disorder that Bria has. It's called CDKL5. It's a brain protein that they just don't make. It can't be ingested. The only uh, possible treatment would be gene therapy, and uh, I, both of them are on, on the waiting list for clinical trials. So all we can do is kind of tread water and hope to try to what we can to reduce the number of seizures, uh, try to improve the developmental delays, and you know, try to, until we get something more definitive with the gene therapy, that's kind of where we are, it's, it's just very expensive. Uh, Bria's parents have given Jenny and Steve, uh, Allison's parents, uh, probably $20,000 worth of physical therapy equipment that they could not have had without that, and so it's just the kind-hearted people, and I'm a biker. All right, Randy. I just talked to your brother and he told me this was your first charity ride. Is that true? No, it is not true. This is about my fifth. He just don't know about the other four. <laughs> so he kind of lied. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So but we don't always go together sometimes, but, but uh, you know, but yeah, this is for the first one here. I, I haven't been to this one before. Well, this is a good one. Um, so tell me, you said something about that people don't think that you're a Harley rider. What is that about? Because <laughs> I ride mostly in tennis shoes and shorts in the summertime. Some people don't don't necessarily care for it, but that's uh, I'm comfortable in them. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with blue jeans and whatever, but I, if I get a bee up my leg, that's me. <laughs> now, I noticed you're riding a different bike than I saw you on just a couple weeks ago. Do you just, what it, whichever one's unlocked, you just take? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The, the fat boy got a little jealous. I was riding the, the glide for a couple weeks there, so I gave her new air filter and plugs and took her back out. 
Rich people are so cute, aren't they? They just pick and choose whatever ones they want. Now, I know you guys do rides all year long. Um, you were telling me a little bit of something about, about one of the rides you guys did. Can, can you share that with us? Uh, we did one on the 4th of July for some, uh, it's, a, it's a wounded veteran charity out at Atterbury called Wish for Heroes, and they do two hunts a year. They, um, they'll pick about 12 to 15 wounded veterans and take them out for an all expense weekend for a hunt. They'll do a turkey hunt, and then later on in the year, they'll do a deer hunt. I just, to me, I think that's a really cool thing. And I know on 4th of July, you guys would normally do the Big Bob Freedom Ride. I know we've covered that before in the past. And uh, so this kind of just kind of combined it together. Is that what you guys did? Yeah. Yeah, we just kind of, we combined it together. Still called it the Freedom Ride, but we come across this little charity and thought it was a good idea to use our Freedom Day for the veterans, so. That's thinking right there, folks. That's thinking. That's what all of us need to keep doing, man. I'm telling you, we got charity rides all the time, and it doesn't matter how many charity rides we have, we need more. And you said that they, do they do like test medicine on her? I mean, they don't have an actual thing, so they kind of just test? It's really just trial and error with medicine. Honestly, um, we are starting a new med Monday, um, and that'll be about the 16th medicine that we've tried in the last eight years. Um, plus, she has a vagal nerve stimulator um, in her chest that um, stimulates her brain uh, to keep the seizure activity down. Um, so we just, yeah, we just, it's trial and error, basically. I'm here with Randy Miller, the head of the Rams ride. You guys hear us talk about it all the time. I always bill it as one of the safest rides in Indiana that I've ever been on. Randy, you guys just had the ride. How did it go? We did. I tell you, it was it was amazing. And, uh, you know, thank God for everything that he does to bless us and to give us the ability to do this sort of thing. But it was an incredible event this past Saturday. Uh, we had beautiful skies, clear blue, low 80s, low humidity. And as everybody knows, uh, a lot of the biking community is uh, weather pending. Yes, they are. So, uh, had a wonderful event. We had uh, well over 200 bikes. We had 300 plus registered participants. Uh, every year we do about 300 t-shirts. This is the first year we sold out. So uh, that was a big deal for us. It was a negative in one aspect that we couldn't get everybody with a shirt right. on their back, but at the same time, I think it equaled success. So uh, it went safe. No issues. Uh, we had some police help in various places. Mooresville was fantastic. We had uh, uh, actually out in Putnam County, the police were called away and Crambos, our good friends at uh, the custom cycle shop out there, got in touch with the volunteer and fire departments in the area and they actually blocked intersections for us, which was amazing. Wow. So they, uh, uh, they had a contingent plan, which we didn't even know about until we landed in Putnam County. So I'm trailing 200 plus motorcycles, assuming everything's in place with respect to the local police and things like that. Right. We get to a couple of intersections and I see these giant fire trucks. Immediately in my mind it signals, that's a problem. Then I realized what they were doing, they were blocking the intersections and things like that. So it was, it was fantastic. And, and as always, uh, one of the things we try to do is maintain the safest possible route. Now, that being said, I know you guys took a trip. We did. And, uh, you we're know, dead. if you're wondering why we're sitting in the location that we're sitting in right now, um, we have a little bit of a, a terrible story to tell, but um, one that needs to be told. Uh, can you share a little bit with us? I can, and, uh, and I tell you, uh, the love and support from the motorcycling community, including Steel Horse, has been amazing. And the reason that I bring that up is because on July 4th, while on a, on a vacation trip to West Virginia, me and a group of riders uh, were there touring the New River Gorge area. Beautiful scenery, beautiful scenery. And we got about halfway through the New River Gorge loop and unfortunately my wife and I were on my machine and were involved in an accident. Uh, fortunately, it was just us. You know, there were a group of us, I was in the lead uh, and it happened to be uh, us, only us that was affected. Uh, my group immediately took control of the scene just like they would anything else. I unfortunately wasn't able to do anything, having been, you know, a, a part of the accident. But uh, that was on July 4th, so um, exactly one month before the largest event that we do every year. Challenging at best, 
um, at that point uh, the wife was injured and that's why we're still here today you know it's it's after the ride and unfortunately she's still hospitalized but uh, but doing very well I'm happy to report and I know that that's part and parcel to the the love respect the the, the support and the prayer that we've gotten uh, from the motorcycling community and family and you guys from Steel Horse it's been fantastic so we've really made an effort to try to turn a negative into a positive if, if you will but you know, a lot of the things, as I mentioned before, that people don't think about in an accident situation is, okay, you're in an accident, horrible, horrible deal. But then what happens after? You know, and that's what we're struggling with today. I've got to, got my little girls with me, and, and as I told you, this happened in West Virginia. So we're not close to home. You don't have the family support structure there. Uh, so, you know, there are a lot of things that folks don't think about that can happen. And, and I myself guilty of the same. I didn't think about a lot of that sort of thing. You know, we're, we're free spirited, the biking community. And, and uh, when we plan a trip, obviously that's the furthest thing from our mind. Um, I will tell you that, uh, that we were wearing helmets and, and I'm grateful for that because they did their job and that's why we're able to have this conversation today. Uh, so continue to do that, of course. And if I could put a plug in for safety, I would absolutely do that. You know, I'll never force anybody to do anything. You know, your, your, your free will is your free will, and that's why we ride motorcycles, because we, we have the ability to do things that others can't. But uh, um, if, uh, if folks are gonna take trips and do things of that nature, you I mean, obviously wanna enforce safety as much as you can, because um, freak accidents can happen. You know, I've been riding for almost 30 years now. I was an AMA licensed racer back in the, before the turn of the century, if you will. But, but uh, you know, I was one of those guys that I can avoid things or I can do this, I can do that. You know, I've, I've done things with a motorcycle that, that some people can't, but it can happen to me. And, and it did, and uh, uh, we've been blessed um, with, uh, with the love and support, as I mentioned. So, so things are going to get better, things are looking up, but uh, there are a lot of ancillary things that folks don't realize that are uh, a result of an incident like that. And that's, you know, if I were to, uh, impart any wisdom on anybody with respect to thinking about that sort of thing or, or questioning safety, it would be just that. It would be, um, you've got to kind of plan for the darkest day and it's unfortunate, but it's true. You know, and, and we take those risks and, uh, and I, it's not going to change me. Motorcycling is a part of my life. It always will be. Uh, but it may make us pack a little differently next time. But you know, uh, it, was, it was an unfortunate event, no question. Well, Randy, I think you've taken time talk with, or talking with us and, and uh, talking about the Rams ride. And uh, again, our prayers are still with you. We're, we're praying night and day, and we're happy to hear a good report finally. Uh, you're looking pretty good, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to the next time we talk. We're hanging tough. We're hanging tough. And I, I can't thank you guys enough for your support. Love the show. Love what you guys are doing with it. And uh, we'll absolutely continue to support every effort. Steel Horse is brought to you by Leydendorf Law with over 60 years of experience in motorcycle and automotive injury cases. Marquette, we're here for the... Uh... Not the miracle, not the miracle ride. <laughs> Name? Dave Sandlin. I don't know how this guy did this. There's scratches all over the bike, but there's no dents. How do you do that? Hey, it's MotoGP weekend. There's a lot of racing going on. At, in... We're going to start our own law firm, Schnizzler and Schindler. I mean, that sounds like a law firm, doesn't it? <laughs> when the schnit hits the fan, you want to find Schnizzler and Schindler. <laughs>